VAR at Minor Mishap Solstice Marching Night. Beautiful, amazing, keep Austin weird activity. People are wearing all kinds of lights. The band is tuning up. We're about to go march through skeletons of trees. Here we are on the solstice. I only regret, as, as does my friend Kim here, that we did not bring any lights. Next year, next year. Next year we'll bring lights. There are kids in, in wagons. Everybody's having a great time. This is a community event. It's been going on for at least 10 years. Minor Mishap is, uh, does all kinds of interesting events, including their flotilla event on Barton Creek, which is really neat. I wanted to share my experience about the um, uh, Minor Mishap marching band that did a performance a couple nights ago on the solstice. Well, it was colorful and light-filled and communal-minded and free-form. It was so Austin, like, it's such a joy that Austinites celebrate on a regular basis. And we celebrate every little thing from solstice to cold weather, to having a parade in the middle of the, you know, the middle of the winter. And um, I saw friends there and I saw old friends there that I haven't seen since before COVID. This is Kim. I live in Austin. I guess the first thing I would say is it's really interesting that the band chooses to do this in kind of a different neighborhood in Austin every winter solstice. The first kind of observation I had is when you park near where the parade is going to start, immediately when you step out of your car, you see all of these wonderful, interesting, strange lights, and you can hear the band sort of tuning up and getting ready to start the parade. And there's just this little kind of buzz in the air and, and everybody's excited to be there and doesn't quite really know what to expect next. And right away you see the band members and, and a lot of the community members who have participated in these before have on these kind of elaborate yellow and black costumes with all of these battery operated lights and you know chandelier hats and feathers and um, kind of big banners with lights hanging off of them so so immediately you see that this is something unique and different that's really special to Austin. So when the parade kind of gets going, everybody is kind of tuning up, the band gets together and they start playing what to me really sounded like kind of a New Orleans dirge. And then everybody, the, the band and all of the community just sort of start moving in the parade. And that kind of music continues, you know, for, for probably a good maybe five, ten minutes until you actually reach the site. And last night the site was under a big bridge. And this is kind of where it gets interesting. So everybody stops underneath this bridge with, you know, the wonderful acoustics. And that's when the music really starts to pick up, to really kind of get peppy, to kind of reach the crescendo. And you probably spend the next hour and a half there under the bridge. And as the tempo kind of really gets going, that's when the folks who are there participating start to dance and all the little kiddos start, you know, running around and playing with hula hoops and running into the middle of the band circle. And everywhere you look, it's just a lot of really happy, joyous faces. And you can really tell that as 
the music continues, people really start to feel like they're a part of this event and everybody starts dancing and clapping and kind of moving to the music. And at that point you realize that you're really, even if you're not playing an instrument, you're really kind of co-creating through what's happening there. So it kind of ends up feeling like a kind of a magical space, if you will. As an observer, kind of attending this event for the first time, it just really struck me how nice it was to be in an experience where all of your senses are filled, where you hear obviously all the wonderful music that Minor Mishap is playing, but you can also, you know, you can feel it. You can feel the beats and you're dancing and you're seeing all of these beautiful lights to the point where when everyone is collected together, there don't even need to be any overhead lights because there's so much brightness from the LED candles and from real candles and Christmas lights and chandelier hats and all the different light sources. And you know, you're outside so you can smell the trees and feel the crisp air. Like there just aren't that many opportunities you have to, to feel like all of your senses are filled and you're participating in the creation of, you know, 90 or 120 minutes, however long it was, in the creation of this community event. Situations like this for me are so magical really because you know, you might be going there with friends or you may even know a couple of folks that are there, but it really is one of those situations where after an hour and a half or so, you walk away with new friends because like I said, everybody is there kind of co-creating what's happening and you really do end up with a sense of community by the time it's over. I really kind of have a couple of takeaways after the parade and the event last night. And I think the first takeaway really is that the older you get, the more you realize that there are just going to be a finite number of opportunities to participate in an event like this, in an event where a lot of disparate folks from around the community come together and kind of co-create something that feels and looks and sounds really magical. And so when you realize that you only have a finite number of those you get to participate in in your life, you end up feeling really grateful that you got to be a part of that. And I remember walking back to the car with you, Will, and thinking, not only do I feel grateful, but I actually feel a little bit lighter and a little bit happier. And really like I was a part of something bigger. I think ultimately I felt brighter, which I imagine was the whole point <laughs> of this happening on the, you know, longest, darkest night of the year. But you really do. You, f you walk away from the event feeling brighter. I think that's one takeaway. I think the other takeaway, and this has kind of more to do with my city and the culture of my city here in Austin. Um, Austin just got the Bum Steer Award in Texas Monthly, maybe just like a couple of weeks ago. It was the Bum Steer Award for 2022. And there were a lot of criticisms of our city and, you know, cost of living. And it, it, there is a lot, it, it, it has gotten harder to live in Austin, that's true. But I feel like the fact that we live in a city where events like this are supported, where community members can just show up and create magic like what happened last night, I would go so far as to say that doesn't happen in many other Texas cities and, and maybe not in any other large Texas cities. And so the fact that we live in a community where people support and enjoy opportunities like that says to me that no matter how hard it gets to live in my city, you know, the rising cost of living and, you know, inflation on everything, that there's still something really special about Austin that gives you more opportunities to participate in things that lead to joy in your life. And for me, you can't really quantify that, that those opportunities just make you want to find ways to stay in Austin. Hey, this is 
is Joel, and here are my impressions from Minor Mishap Marching Band's Winter Solstice Lantern event last night. Um, it's the shortest day of the year, and it's dark, and it's cold. And you walk through a park under a bridge near a creek, and here's a band filled with uh, people who are wearing really crazy clothes, really, really fun stuff. Uh, like a candelabra uh, helmet um, and a lot of LEDs on their uh, on, on, on their colors, which are black and yellow, um, and they're playing great music. It's a honk band, and it just makes you want to dance. You just feel it. There's just something about brass instruments. Like if they're played with this this fun kind of boom ba ba boom ba 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 do ba do ba do, you know, you just want to dance. And so we did. People had these all kinds of lanterns out. Um, uh, they were holding, uh, they're wearing, and it was just a really nice get together uh, to to have fun. Like outside of New Orleans, I guess honk is the only kind of musical genre really where people kind of like dance in the street. Um, and this is this is like kind of bringing great music, you know, to the neighborhoods, to the street. It's a big band. Uh, mainly brass, woodwinds, and percussion. And um, uh, I've, got a, I've got a number of uh, friends in the band, so it's always great to go see them and say hi. It's always great in the crowd because they always draw, I don't know, people you meet, people you want to meet, and friends, uh, friends that I know that I haven't seen in a long time or maybe I just saw yesterday. Uh, so it's just this atmosphere of like, hey, let's all get together and join music with these great musicians and let's dance a little. And... Um, they're always fun. And, you know, the reason they're fun is because they're having a good time. Like, they love this. They love doing this. And then, you know, the rest of the crowd does as well. So it was a great way to step out of life, step into some great music in, you know, the shortest day of the year. Give us, you know, give me a little hope of all the uh, other great days that are going to come as the days get longer. That was my impression. See ya. This is Susie. Um, the music last night was fantastic. It was really varied. It was really fun. I danced even in the mud. Um, I also saw a lot of friends there. It was joyful. It was warm. It was fun. And it was beautiful to look at. There were so many people in costumes all lit up to celebrate the return of the light. And there were a lot of families with young kids. Being a mom, I love seeing kids in the community dancing to music, listening, playing. It was such a great time. I loved it. Thank you for inviting me.